Hello, welcome to Keenan Keys. Today I want to show you the Yamaha PSS100. It's a small toy keyboard with 32 mini keys, 6 note polyphony, 16 instruments with variation buttons, 16 rhythms with accompaniment, a demo tune and a display. The main feature is a digital recorder. It came out in 1989, together with two very similar but a bit simpler models. The PSS80 has also a voice variator and 6 note polyphony, but only 8 instruments and rhythms, a different demo tune and a simple melody recorder. The PSS125 is the same as the PSS80, with the addition of 4 drum pads. There is another a bit similar looking model existing, the PSS140 from 1988. But inside is the YM2420 FM sound chip, which is also used by the SHS-10 guitar. These three models are using the YM3427 sound chip. It produces simple square waves. They were sold pretty cheap, for about 50 or 60 dollars. Unfortunately, all of them are missing an output, so I'm going to install one. And I will also repair the speaker. It's still working, but it's rattling around inside. I can't get out the NAS screw. It seems to be held by a broken piece. The bottom piece was manufactured in May 1989. This large IC is the CPU. Right next to it is the 64K RAM chip. And this little IC is the sound chip. I will try super glue for the first piece. But I don't think it will fix the other two pieces. I will try contact glue instead. I don't like it. It smells awful and it isn't as easy to handle as super glue, but it's a bit stronger. And now a bit cleaning. I've already cleaned the keys and the housing with water and mild soap. I will put back in most of the parts before I install the output. I'm no electronics expert by any means, and I'm not even good at soldering, but this modification is very easy. All you need is a soldering iron, a drill, an output jack, and a few extra cables. There are different types of output jacks. You can use this RCA jack, for example, if you want to connect it to your stereo. Or maybe this small mono jack, that works the same. It has two connection points for tip and sleeve. Simply use the two cables that were attached to the speaker, and connect them to the jack. That's the easiest way, but you can't use the speaker anymore. You can also connect two additional cables directly to the speaker. This way the speaker is always on. One thing that might occur is that the signal is too loud and distorted, so it could be necessary to insert a resistor to reduce the volume. You can also do this with a volume control, but the volume control on this keyboard is special. It also shortens the sound. I will show you later. I prefer to use a jack with a switch contact. This jack has an additional connection point for the speaker, and it's connected to the tip contact. But it's disconnected whenever a plug is inserted, so the speaker is automatically muted. Connect the signal and ground wires, and use two additional cables to connect the speaker. This is exactly what I did with the Casio SA7, but this time I will take it one step further. I will use a stereo jack. It has one more connection point for the ring of a stereo or TRS plug. I will try to connect this to the direct output of the sound chip, for two reasons. To compare both signals, and maybe I can get rid of the noise that every button makes when it's pressed. If we have a look at the circuitry, we see that the beep noise isn't produced by the sound chip. It comes from the CPU. So if I could get the signal from the audio out pin of the sound chip, the noise should be gone. Same connections as before, ground to sleeve, amp signal to tip, the connections for the speaker, and finally the connection of sound chip and ring. I haven't tried this before, but hopefully it works, and I can use the split cable to record both signals at the same time. First I'm going to desolder the speaker. There should be enough space for a large jack, but I will use a closed version of the one I've shown you. It takes a little less space. Normally I would place it next to the power socket. 
because I like it when all connections are next to each other. But the wires are very short and I will place it as close to the amp as possible. It fits and it won't turn when I fasten it with the nut. First I solder two new cables to the speaker. Put some solder to the contacts, that makes it a bit easier. Now I attach the two ground wires to the sleeve contact. The amp signal to the tip contact and the speaker cable. Now comes the final step. I connect the blue cable to the ring contact. But I will test it first. It's okay to do this as long as it's a battery powered device. You may damage the circuitry, but you won't hurt yourself. This is the right pin. The signal is very low, but it's okay. I will make the connection on the other side of the board. Ready for testing. Speaker is okay. The volume is one step below maximum by default. This is the amp signal. It sounds perfect. No need for further modifications. The direct signal is much lower, but I compensated it with the gain control of my audio mixer. It's a bit clearer and thinner. The amp signal is compressed and there's a bit more going on in the lower mids. But the noise is still there. It's different, but it's still there. So I guess there's no way to turn it off completely. But however, I will use the amp signal for further demonstrations, cause it's the sound you will get with a simple output modification. We have 16 instruments. They are selected by a combination of number and letter. This is A1, clarinet. You can change the sound with a voice variator. A total of 630 variations are possible. That sounds a lot, but a lot of the variations sound the same. The bright and mellow buttons change the basic waveform. Eight different waveforms are available. The short and long buttons let you choose between five different types of envelopes. The sound is stopped when the instrument is changed, but you can use the variator while playing. Some instruments are very simple, rock guitar for example. Sounds more like a bagpipe, banjo. Piano. The keys are way too sensitive for my taste, especially the black ones. It takes only a tiny touch to trigger the sound. Some sounds have a light vibrato, like trumpet. And electric organ. UFO has the strongest vibrato. And some instruments have a tremolo effect, like vibraphone.
fantasy. This instrument is good to demonstrate how the volume control changes the sound. It has a really rough resolution, only 5 steps. And you can clearly hear how the sound is getting shorter. You might use this as an extra effect. Mandolin. Honky Tonk Piano is special. It sounds detuned. And the bright and mellow buttons don't change the waveform. They change the amount of detuning. Six steps are possible. Now let's have a look at the rhythms. The default tempo is 124 BPM. And it can be changed in 16 steps. Push the up and down buttons at the same time to get back to 124 BPM. No fill or ending button. And the rhythm changes on the first beat of the next measure. The polyphony is reduced to three notes if the accompaniment is switched on. There's just a single finger mode and four types of chords are possible. Major, seventh, minor, and minor seven. This is March two. The accompaniment consists of drums, bass, and two other instruments that play rhythmic phrases or little melodies. Hard rock. Slow rock. Ballad. Country. March 1.
The digital recorder works basically like a tape recorder. But of course, it's not a real audio recorder. It's more like a sequencer without added function. You can record up to 100 measures. The played notes will be quantized with a 16th note resolution. You can't record notes shorter than that. And you can only record triplets in a triplet rhythm style, like hard rock for example. Choose a sound, push record and start playing. The rhythm starts automatically and will also be recorded. Push reset to get to the beginning of the recording. Unfortunately, it doesn't record the variated changes. If you want to record just the melody, push record and play. The rhythm will start, but it will not be recorded. The previous recording will be erased until the point where you press stop. Everything beyond will not be erased. If you want to erase everything, hold down reset while turning it on. You can also record the accompaniment. Start the recording with the start button if you want an intro with drums only. Record something on top with up to three voices. You can change style and instrument while recording, but you don't have to do it in real time. Stop the recording and make some changes. Push record again. The recording will start on the first beat of the displayed measure. Since this works more or less like a tape machine, you can't record an overdub, but you can play along. Of course I added a few extra instruments, but I really like this simple sequencer. You can record measure by measure if you like, and it's very precise. The voice variator is also very useful, but there's no octave switch and the key range is somewhere in the middle, so it would have been nice if some of the waveforms were an octave higher or lower. The keys are a bit too sensitive, but overall it's a very nice little keyboard. Oh, by the way, this keyboard has a test mode. Hold down the highest two white keys and turn it on. It will perform a quick RAM test, and then you can play the clarinet with the panel buttons. You have access to a few lower notes and, much better, the drum sounds. You can use the recorder buttons as drum pads. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.